welcome to What Am I Rolling, a twice-monthly RPG one-shot podcast, hosted by me, Fiona. This is the final part in our four-part The Lost Kenku one-shot, so make sure you've listened to the first few parts before continuing on with this episode. Before we get too far ahead, a quick spoiler warning here. If you haven't played or read The Lost Kenku and want to keep it a surprise until you do, stop listening now and come back when you're ready. To briefly recap, Ryan is playing Fargrim, a dwarven cleric who is searching for his lost companion, a Kenku by the name of Corcoran Jones. According to reports, Corcoran was last seen heading towards the strange mining outpost of Weirding, a couple days travel away. But upon Fargrim's arrival to the town, none of the residents seemed to know the Kenku's current whereabouts. As Fargrim's mission to find his friend gets underway, it soon becomes clear to him that all is not what it seems and the only person who may have answers is a strange eccentric man known as the Wizard Weirding. Remember, whenever a character performs an ability check, an attack roll, or a saving throw, they must roll a 20-sided die, known as a d20. They then add any relevant modifiers or bonuses from their character sheet to the result and see if they can beat an unknown difficulty class, or DC, which has been set by the Games Master. If you're keen to know more, the basic rules can be found for free on the official Wizards of the Coast Dungeons & Dragons website. That's dnd.wizards.com. You can also try out D&D Beyond, the official digital toolset for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. D&D Beyond offers a compendium of all the game rules, lore and adventures, as well as digital tools like a character builder and digital character sheets. You can find out more information on the D&D Beyond website. That's dndbeyond.com. A quick technical note here about this one shot. For this session, we were testing out some brand new audio equipment, and whilst the majority of the audio is really good, there are times where it's not 100% perfect. I.e. one of us, alright, mostly me, moved a little bit too far away from the microphone whilst talking. Hopefully, the overall listening experience of this one shot isn't too badly affected, but we just thought we'd mention it in advance. One last thing before we begin. Naturally, there are times in this one shot where the players and myself mostly myself, get the rules wrong or forget something plot-wise. Whilst we always endeavour to stick to the rules wherever possible, at the end of the day we all make mistakes, and what matters most is that everyone enjoys themselves. And with all that out of the way, let's get back to the outpost town of Weirding. I'm going to sort of wander out the room and see if I can track down Mezzo again. Yeah, that's easy enough. Uh, you probably just bump into her in the foyer. She's just talking to some servants. Uh, again, talking about something about T-Rex steaks. She's like, oh, I didn't expect it. We, we never get deliveries from the... You know, talking to the servants about that. And he's like, oh, sorry, Fargrim. Are, 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 are you leaving us? I, yes, I, I'm afraid I... I, um, I was going to say that there was a certain offer of uh, accommodation, being able to stay. You oh. wouldn't happen to have a room three still. I must confess, I only arrived today and I haven't actually organised accommodation elsewhere. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure it would be okay for just the night. I mean, um, the guest rooms are on the first floor and you're more than welcome to ha- help yourself to them. I am in one of them myself, but um, I will say the second floor is out of bounds. That is where uh, Wizard Weirding does his experiments and stuff, so I, I would appreciate if you if you will stay here with us, not to uh, disturb him. No, that's absolutely fine. Um, mm-hmm. Can you, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a, a quill and paper, would you, or something? I, I can certainly send for some. Yes, um, just uh, briefly, that would be lovely. Of just... course, and she, she asks one of the, the serving girls and she comes away again, and another serving girl who seems to drool ever so slightly, and maybe one of the eyes is slightly keeps moving to one side, but she goes away and comes back with um, some quill and ink. Yeah, fine. And, um, and paper. <laughs> I, I sort of just, in, in plain view of her, I just write a note, but I kind of keep it hidden from her. Mm-hmm. And I write a note that just says, oh, <laughs> catching his name again. Sorry, it was Wizard Weirding. Weirding, yeah. Yeah. I just put Weirding. Mm-hmm. I know. I can help. Okay. And then sign it F. And I'll sort of fold it over so that she can't see it and just say a night's accommodation would be absolutely fantastic um just as a personal favor to me i I just wrote a quick note of thank you would you be able to pass it to the wizard i would strongly like to express my thanks make a persuasion check 22 22 
<laughs> well, of course, um, I'm sure he'd be happy to, and she takes it. Um, and do, do not worry, I will get that straight to him. And she, 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 actually, she actually talks to one of the, uh, the servants uh, who takes it straight up the stairs. And you, again, you can see as she goes straight up to the second floor, maybe turns left yeah. out of view. Perfect. And she goes, well, uh, let me show you to one of the one of our guest rooms. Yeah, yeah. great. And I'll follow her, yeah. Yep. So as you get up, it's another sort of uh, U-shape uh, sort of bend. So the stairs come up um, and she takes you across to the east side. And there's like four doors. And she sort of opens the closest one, and it is, it looks like a very simple guest room, a four poster bed, a nice mirror. But this especially is perfect for me, thank you. This is more than I could have asked for. The washroom is down there. I, I strongly advise you, know, sort of, <laughs> I strongly advise, please use that one and not the one downstairs. Oh, that's, uh, that's very kind of you, thank you. Right. Uh, if, you sh if you should need me, I'll just be in the parlour downstairs. I'm just uh, finishing up some notes myself. Wonderful, that's very kind, thank you. When she's gone mm -hmm. on the first floor, can I just double check? As I came in, Excuse could me. I see a door that would link to the servant staircase on this floor? Like, is it fairly obvious which way that would be? I think it almost has like a mirror image. So on this side is like uh, the guest rooms. And on the other side, it looks like to be other rooms. And you actually probably see servants come in and out and you get a quick glance and it looks like uh, servants' quarters. Yeah. And the one on the door sort of opposite the uh, the washroom on the other side would be looks like a, a staircase. And you see someone come in and out, out of it. In my same way, I'm just going to be wandering around. I'm just going to mm -hmm. walk around, just take a look around the servants' quarters, just have a look in rooms, okay. see if each one is servants' quarters. If anybody like is like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm so sorry. I was shown to my room and I've forgotten which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what I'm looking for yeah. is signs that these aren't guests, the servant quarters, effectively. Right, I see what Something you mean. else is in these rooms. Perfect. Um... I'd say, because you're being a bit of a doddery old fool, make a, make a performance check. <laughs> performance check. Oh, dear. 18. <laughs> Holy wow. shit. Okay. That's a zero. That's, that's inc that, that is yeah. incredible. So basically, so you so wait maybe five or six minutes mm -hmm. and you see the servants come and go and you sort of start looking into each of these servants' rooms. And again, uh, two of them are empty. Uh, one has just one person in just sort of cleaning some shoes. Doesn't look up as when you um, open the door. And then the final door before what you assume is the staircase you open it and two guards look up and they go, oh, sorry, can we can we help you? And you sort of explain, oh, sorry, I've got my stuff. And again, with that role, yeah. they're sort of like, oh, okay. And they are aware that there is a guest in the house and yeah. they sort of show you back and they're sort of, one well, of them looks the other like, you know, this, yeah. this guy, yeah. whatever. So we've got like a few servants' rooms. A few servants' rooms and a guard room and then what you would assume is the staircase yeah. Uh, right at the at the end of the U. Okay, that. perfect. That's great. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Well, no I'd worries. like to go back to my room and I'd like to wait there for a little while. All right, cool. Um, again, in your room, you, again, very basic stuff. So there's a, like a mirror, um, the four poster bed. Um, doesn't look like it's been slept in for a while. No, that's fine. Is there a, like a window outside? There is, and it has bars on it. It does have bars. That's fine. Do they look like strong bars or? Uh, they do look particularly strong. Your window opens inwards. Yeah. Uh, so that it allows the fresh air to come in and actually because you are a dwarf and you do uh think oh i make a i guess it's just an investigation check right yeah 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 <laughs> three three these are pretty tough bars yeah like <sighs> whoever made these was pretty good yeah well, fine yeah that's fair enough I'll close the window come back in mm -hmm. i mean i've got there's always things you can do there's always things you can do but yeah, yeah that's yeah, good yeah. to know that's fine um so you wait maybe Five, ten minutes, half an hour goes by. There's still like you can hear the hustle and bustle of servants, but no one comes and disturbs you, and you get no response from your note. I would like to wait, mm -hmm. probably until about midnight, Perfect. if I can. So mm -hmm. I'm sort of just sat on the bed, maybe looking out the window or something. I'm still like. I haven't put anything down, I'm nope. equipped, I'm still like <laughs> ready, but I'm just going to wait. I want to see if there's a response. Make another perception check for me, with advantage, because you are listening, sort of like, you're sort of more um, aware of your surroundings. Okay, that's a 21. Excellent. Maybe it's just the way it's a quite quiet night, and after a while you hear there's like a sound coming from above your room, and it sounds like crying, like a woman crying. Thanks to Mez sort of indicating it, you know, Mez is on the same floor as you. While I'm in the room, does there appear to be another way out? Is it just the one door? Just the one door. There's no, like, other secret ways in or, like, peepholes no. I can see in the stonework or something? No. no. Uh, well, in that case, 
about midnight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to poke my head out the door and see what I see. Does there seem to be any movement at all? Uh, maybe you look out of the window and you spot again the weird leopard creature patrolling the garden. The household seems quiet, silent, mm. apart from the sobbing upstairs. Okay, in that case, I would like to go up the servant stairs. All right. Actually, are you stealthing? I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. I've been avoiding this. Yeah, I know. Day. I know. Disadvantage because of my armor. And oh, that's, that's all one. That's a minus one. Oh my god. Okay. So really, I'm not still. <laughs> I'm just. So the second floor landing, again, has lots of pictures, uh, like paintings, more so than the foyer, which only had the one. Yeah. Sorry. Portrait. First floor. Sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the, yeah. the one you're on, and there's paintings of various animals and various creatures, um, some exotic, some you've never seen before. Um, as you go around, you're toe or your foot hits like uh, like one of those um uh vases like on a pedestal uh make a dexterity uh check to see if you catch it before it falls oh good nope zero. Oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um it cr crashes to the floor right outside the guards entrance and you just hear huh what and the sound of guards getting getting ready to come out what do you do I'm not going to try and hide. Okay. I don't think I can get anywhere without being without, with being hidden. Yep. So I'm just going to sort of kneel down, yep. um, start grabbing the bits of uh, bars, mm -hmm. and like as they are, I assume they'll come out of the room at some point to come and see what's happened. Mm -hmm. I'll use the mending cantrip to just sort of put it back nice. together. Excellent. So put it on the floor, put the dinosaur. Like I'm, I'm not looking like I've been trying to hide, yeah. like I've stumbled into something. Of course. And then put it back out and just sort of as they come out, just be like, I'm so sorry. I was on my way to use the facilities and I knocked over your vase, but then looking at it, I think I've put it back together and sort of like just being like really blunt about it. Like I'm not trying to hide anything. Okay. Make a deception check because that's not what you were doing, but yes. <laughs> 15. 15. Three guards come out and some of you recognise from the uh, from the gate outside. One of them sort of goes, washroom's on the other side. I go, no, don't bother, don't bother. Uh, it's okay. I'm sorry. It's, I have no idea where I am. It's... <laughs> It's not very that hard, sir, but it's it's okay. And they sort of please be more careful. The wizard wedding is very precious about his um, ornaments. We will let this one slide this time. And then they all sort of file back around, and sort of one of them sort of not watches you go to to the washroom, but <laughs> sort of makes sure, sort of makes sure that if you use the facilities, and that you you will be escorted back to your room. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I I go in, um, mm -hmm. sort of use the facilities. <laughs> um, uh, it's in, in, this, in this in this washroom actually. Again, it's very similar to the other one, but there is. As well as a small pedestal with a bowl on it in the mirror, there is a copper tub and there's like a a, a very beautiful, uh, again, garish sort of toilet and bidet combination. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And um... Which is very it's very rare in the fantasy realms you get to see a innate toilet. No, yeah. no, I get that. I appreciate what you're doing for doing this. Um, yeah, there's nothing, nothing looks off in this room, nothing I can see. Uh, you make an investigation check. Natural 20. Natural 20. Never been in a bathroom this clean. It's very clean. It's not used. Yeah. I'm beginning to get the impression that Mez is not all she seems, and, and the guards don't appear to use this as well. They mm -hmm. have their own facilities. or. And But you would assume that this is for the guests. The guards will probably have an outhouse somewhere, or Fine. somewhere Fine. else. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes more sense than what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't have bladders. They just... <laughs> Absorbent. Went down off. to the mine, yeah. <laughs> Went to the an hour and a half down or something. <laughs> totally, totally. I, I come out of the bathroom. Yep. Um, oh God's still there. Yeah, make my way back to the room. Like, okay. I'm going to maybe shake his hand and say, no, I'm, I will try my best not to get lost again. Okay. Um, if you need to use the facilities again, it's just down there. And he sort of, the, the guard looks at their hand and like sort of wipes it slightly because it's probably, assumably, a little damp. Yeah. Probably even like, mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then you're back in your room. Perfect. <laughs> is, so, it, um, is it perfect? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm considering options here. Mm -hmm. There's something not right, and I can't get up <laughs> because I can't stealth. So I'm gonna have to. Hmm, I'm gonna wait another few hours. Okay. Sort of two, three o'clock. Yep. See if anything happens. Make another perception check. Oh, oh, two twos. Two twos. You notice the sobbing stops eventually. And that's about it. No. You don't really hear anything else. Okay. That's fine. So, I 
Mm. What am I going to do? It's 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 the approach of like bash down the door against try and do something really clever and I can't find <laughs> a clever option here. This mm-hmm. is the problem because they are going to spot me whenever I come past the door. I'm gonna give it one more try. I'm gonna try and stealth. There's always the, the main stairs up to the second floor. Oh sorry, I thought they'd kind of said stay in so the they, room. So they 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 asked floor. you to stay in the room, but like when you went out before there was no one on the on the second floor stairs guarding it. So you could just go All straight right. up. Well, yeah, then that's a good idea then. Um, let's try and do it that way. Okay. Let's go down and then up again. You head out again, look around. And there's no light now. All the candles have burnt out. But again, with your dark vision, you can make oh, sense. Oh, in dark now. That's good. Completely in, in dark. And actually, as you get towards the, the stairs that's leading up to the second floor, you do see a little bit of light, candlelight up there. So you, you are a bit cautious. Um, but there's no one on the stairs or you can't hear anyone moving around upstairs. Um you want to go up? Yeah. All right. Uh, are you stealthing? I will give it a go. Yep. It's not going to work for me, but... That's all right. Uh, two. Wow. Well, does he beat a two? <laughs> we'll <Yes>. see. <laughs> <laughs> so as you make it your way up to um, the second floor, and this is where sort of the staircase ends, again, it's almost like a U shape. There's no stair rail looking okay. over it. It's just, it's just pure wall. And you see two rooms off to the right and two rooms off to the left. And as you make your way up, there is a sudden sort of voice. Hello? Hello? Is someone there? And it's coming from one of the doors on your right. Can I tell which door? Yeah, you can tell. It's closest door. Yeah. I am going to move into the hallway, Mm -hmm. uh, open the door, see what I see. It's locked, that's the thing. Yeah. It's locked. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Who's there? Dickie, is that you? Dickie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, what am I going to do? I am going to... I'm going to try the one behind me. So one on the left, closest to the stairwell. And as you pad away, you hear the voice say, Don't go! But I assume you, you, you still go. Um, the other thing you notice, again, as you sort of explore this uh, place with more candles lighting up, the hallway. And there's even more paintings up here, but this time the creatures on it are they're almost mythical in a way. And uh, make a make a nature check for me actually. Nature check. Oh. Uh, natural twenty. Uh, okay. As you go past, you sort of again you recognise these from childhood stories that your clan had talked about. A flail snail, there is a chull, there is a flame skull, and right next to the door you're in there is a minotaur. A minotaur. Looking very, very fierce. So you're going for the opposite door? Yeah. So you open it, unlocked, and what you see is like an old stone room, no windows at all, and a drain in the middle of it. On the walls are various bodies in various states of decay. Their skin is peeled back, exposing various muscle, organs and bone. It's almost like anatomy class, almost like wires and like red ribbon pointing out and there's like meticulously labelled stuff mm. like heart, lungs, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Each of the body's head has a small round hole at the top of the skull and you recognise these sort of bodies. There's a bugbear, there's a goblin, there's a um, human, there's an elf. The, the body closest to you is still dripping with blood. There are shells around dotted around the room and there are like... Uh, Bottles filled with organs and stuff. Yeah. And right across from you, one thing that catches your attention is this huge uh, glass containing an eye. And I need you to do a check for me. Uh, oh, on. a check for you. Yes. Sorry, hobgoblin, bugbear, human, elf. Uh, Anything else I missed? Wait, there's no kenku. No kenku. No kenku. That's what I'll write down. Yeah. No kenku. You're fine with the kenkus. Good. Corkering okay. is still... He's still in the game. So I need you to make a charisma saving throw for me, please. A charisma saving throw. Oh, dear. Oh, no. I'm a priest. That's good. <laughs> uh, 17. 17 does make it. I've never seen a charisma saving throw before. That's cool. So you take uh, 15 points of psychic damage. Oh, painful. And this thing, this eye just bores straight into you and it just fills you with dread but you manage to sort of just shake it off and just like look away like just dark just do not make eye contact with it you feel 
it's a horrible sense of dread coming from that thing. Okay. Like, am I am I frightened of it? Or? No. It just brought back weird... Any time you have been scared in your life, any time you felt fear, it just came back and that's what gave you the shock. But you're not frightened to go into the room or something, but you know that whatever's in that jar is evil. Yeah. But it's still in the jar. It is still in the jar. Could I, in theory, make my way to it without looking at it? Uh, you know vaguely where it is, yeah? Yeah. And again, as you make your way into this room, again, just looking around, it's almost like a macabre, almost like a curiosity shop. You know how things are just displayed out and like, almost like, oh, is it Michelangelo's um, weird man and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, it's, it's Arms like... spread out, legs cut in. Yeah, fair enough. But all these bodies do have a hole on the top of their heads. Yeah. So. I will, yeah, make my way over to it mm-hmm. without looking. Yep. Can I get up to it? Can I can I sort of like move around the back of it? Is it on a table that I can... No, it's on a shelf. It's on a, it's, shelf. it's on a shelf on the back wall. Can I get... Okay, is there anything else I can see in this room while I'm in here without looking at the, without the thing? Uh, make a, a, a perception check. Uh, 16. 16. Um, not much different. I mean, the floor is completely stained with blood and various liquids. Yeah. Um, all the bodies that are attached to the walls are clearly dead, and they've been some of them are a couple of days dead, some are a couple of weeks dead. The one closest to the entrance is a, a human male, is still bleeding out. So possibly maybe a few hours, maybe a day or so. Did I? Do I? Can I recognize him? Actually, yeah. Make another perception check because I haven't thought about this. But... Yeah. Uh, 16 again. You don't recognize him from someone from the town. No. Either he's taking the last day or so, so you probably wouldn't have. Yeah, um... And these guys all look like dead, dead. They oh, don't like. 100% dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Them brains have been pulled out of their heads. Uh, <laughs> yes, to a certain extent, yes, yeah, they do. Say that, <laughs> right, well, in that case, I'm going to make my way back out of the room and close the door. Cool. Uh, were you going to take the whatever's in the jar with you, or are you just going to um, leave it there? I think it would be difficult to. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to leave it for now. I know it's there. And go so out, shut the door. door. Yeah. Vomit slightly, perhaps. But yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a bit, bit of a headache. That's not good. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try the next door on the right. So not the one where the noise is coming from, but the one next to that. So you go to the one next door, and that is, you can open it. Yeah. Do you want to just go straight in? Uh, very carefully having a <laughs> Make a perception check. <laughs> uh, nine. Nine. Can't hear anything, so no. I have to go in. This is actually quite a much smaller room. Uh, to the one you just come from with a lectern in the center and it looks almost like a study and actually there are books lying the wall so you think oh this is actually maybe the proper library yeah and you have what looks like three glass cases that line the walls each filled with books and various items and instantly what takes your notice is on the back wall there is a painting a huge painting of the room you're currently in but the only difference is there is a Kenku next to one of the glass cases. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Wonderful. Some sort of magic puzzle. <laughs> hmm. And the glass cases, like I said, they're filled with books and various different items. If you wish to inspect them, um, that'll be an investigation check. Yeah, go on then. Go for it. That sounds good. Uh, 20. These books are definitely more magical in yeah. nature. Uh, one that does catch your eye is uh, Brain Dead. Uh, a science guide to necromancy. Um, Good. There is some scrolls that you can see, but you can't make out what they say. There looks like to be a potion of greater healing in one of them. And then you can't... It's weird. There's like... It's like almost like a cigarette box, but very small and black and very ornate on the top. And you can't quite make out. There's something around it. You're not entirely sure what it is. So third bookcase, there's like a sort of black cigarette box, right? Mm-hmm. And if you look at the painting, that's sort of Corcoran that's sort of next to it. Or a Kenku. Maybe not Corcoran, but definitely a Kenku. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one. There's, uh, yeah, there's yeah, only yeah. One, like one Kenku that's appeared throughout this entire campaign. I'll have to double check how this works. But mm-hmm. I am going to, I believe, make my way to the middle of the room, so towards mm-hmm. the lectern. Mm-hmm. And I am going to cast Find Traps. Excellent. So <laughs> I sense the presence of any trap within range, 120 feet. Within line of sight. Uh, chat for purpose of this spell includes anything that would inflict a sudden or unexpected effect you consider harmful or undesirable, <laughs> which is most things. Uh, which is specifically uh, intended by, as such by its creator. Um, Burst of a spell would sense an area affected by the alarm spell, a glitch of warding, or a mechanical pit trap, but would not reveal a natural weakness in the floor, for instance. 
It merely reveals that a trap is present. I don't learn the location of each trap, but I do love the general nature of the danger. Okay. This whole room is trapped. <laughs> That's what you get from it. You, I mean, maybe not location, but you can definitely sense the glass uh, cases are trapped. Yeah. And the doorway is uh, trapped in some way as well. The, the one you came through. But it doesn't seem to have sprung yet. No. So possibly, like, if I were to leave. Even the painting itself, there's something about it. Do I get the general nature of the danger posed by the traps, I sense? Um, yes. I mean, try not to yes. give too much away. I'm, try, yeah. I'm trying to. How, I don't have words for it. Um, yes, it's you, not sudden death. But no, in not sudden death. But you definitely, you sense that if you were to touch or break open one of the cases, you would be transported somewhere. And judging by where the kenku is in the painting, you would assume you'd be transported into the painting. Well, that's interesting. How do you break the painting? Or reverse the painting. Mm. I am going to go over to one of the bookcases, the one with the Kenku in it. Okay. And I am going to cast the spell magic. Can you read out what that does for me? So the spell magic. I basically uh, I choose one creature, object, a magical effect within range. A spell of any spell of third level or lower in the target ends. If it's more than that, I have to make a check. So um, describe what you do to dispel the magic. So again, there's a sort of sense where I sort of uh, I pick the mace up and sort of like focus and it just glows red hot and I just sort of touch it and just <laughs> the energy goes out. So are you touching the the case? Uh, it is, or... uh, it's within 120 feet, so I don't have to touch it. But... No, no, but so but, but what are you aiming it at? Because it's an object. The case. The case, okay. There is sort of a sudden sort of um, shift and that's it. Yeah. Okay. No, um, vis- no visual change. But does it feel like it worked, or is it difficult uh, to say? It's difficult to say. Well, Again, you'll use like those traps everywhere. Yeah, but if I did it, I'm, I'm going to trust my empowering. I'm going to try and open it. Okay, make a sleight of hand check for me, please. Okay, sleight of hand. Are you sure you don't mean no? Instant success. Eight. Eight. As you touch the case, you there's a moment of trepidation, but nothing happens. But as you're trying to open the case, you it's clearly locked. Well, that's not good. Uh, can I? Oh, I, I'm not. I knew I should have played a rogue. <laughs> this would have been so much easier. I don't think it would have been. I've got to be honest. <laughs> can I go up to the painting mm-hmm. and can I cast identify? Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I was going to say describe to me what identify does. I always get it wrong. Identify pretty much means I think I get just to, to know what it is. <laughs> what is uh, this? Hang on. She's an object that I must touch throughout the casting of the spell. If it is a magic item or some other magic imbued object, you learn its properties and how to use them, whether it requires attunement to use and how many charges it has, if any. You learn whether any spells are affecting the item and what they are. So basically, it's kind of like, but I have to touch it. I have to touch the painting. Okay. So you touch it in, how, how long does that take? Is that like 10 minutes? It is one minute. One minute, fine. So you take a moment to concentrate and when you touch the painting, you sense the magic in it, but nothing happens. It is obviously magical. Yeah. It is some form of entrapment and it is connected to two of the glass cases, whereas before it was connected to three. And you suspect that anyone who was trying to break into them would be automatically trapped inside this painting. Yeah. Do I know how to reverse it? Is there a way of reversing it? I'd say make an investigation check for me. Uh, four. Uh, it's, it's tricky because, again, it's, it's, you know what it does and stuff, but reversing it... It's a bit beyond your capabilities as a, as a, as a cleric. No, that's fine. Yeah. Well, what I'm going to... I'm guessing off the top of my head, it's connected to two of the bookcases, but I'm assuming not the one the Kenku is in in the picture. Uh, not anymore. No. So that trap, I'm guessing, has been sprung by me. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go over to the case. The, the door is closed. In it's, moment, or it is seems it locked. Open? Yeah, the yeah. one that you tried to get into. Yeah, yeah. what about the door? Um, I, I didn't close it, did I say? So, I, it's, it's I, the room. I, 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 I mean, like I, I, I did. Yeah, I assume it's still open. You've not, you've not been disturbed in this time. You've taken your time. Whoever was crying in the other room has not appeared. Can I just like slowly, using force, try and like break the lock, like pushing it oh. or pulling? You know, like literally ripping it open. It's, it's gonna be. It's not gonna work. But I'll give it Make a good go. Make a strength check. Straight <laughs> strength. Straight strength check. Natural 20. <laughs> Amazing. 
thankfully you sort of catch it before it makes any sort of noise or anything like that. And again, yeah, you see some books and stuff and then you see this cigarette case. And now actually you're close to it. Actually you realise it's not a cigarette case. It's a black sort of set of playing cards. <laughs> and it's all covered in sort of a very runic magic that you can't make out. Oh, I've got so few spells left. <laughs> this is my problem. Um, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab the cards. Yep. Make me a history check. History check. Yep. So right, that that's twenty. You have heard of such legendary pack of playing cards, but you've never seen one, and to, and it makes sense that something like this would have so many. Uh, security and traps. It is a deck of many things. <laughs> Has the Kenki changed in the picture? Like, is it still? Like, is it moving? Has it gone? Uh, no. Now that I've gone into this, it's thing. still the same. Damn. <laughs> you can make another Arcana check for me now. Oh. Now that you've working out about the puzzles That's and very stuff. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, Seventeen. So again, going back to the painting. You have a look, and whilst, you know, the painting itself is attached to traps and supply, actually looking around the edges of the painting, the frame itself, there seems to be runes carved in it, and it faintly glow. The magic seeds more coming from the frame than the actual painting itself. I'd like to go up to the frame, mm -hmm. and I'd like to attempt to touch it and, like, will the Kenku out. Will the Kenku out? I don't know. Just like in my head, a command of like, out you come. Like, you know, like in the same way that I command my okay. magic, like that sense yeah. of thing. I don't know. It's, it's probably not going to be a thing. Okay. But... Um, you take a moment. Nothing changes. Okay. Nothing happens. Okay. That's fine. And I can, I can like see the runes, touch the runes. Yeah. Absolutely fine. Oh, that's so weird. I don't want to trap. I, I, it's either I know, I know. I'm going through another way and get into the painting. Yeah. I don't know if that would just trap me and make me all over. <laughs> I don't know, man. As what would say, you do? I would Fiona throw something at me that could like instantly kill me. Like, this is the end say. of the campaign. <laughs> what the clay do? He wants to get it out. He would do. He would do this. I'm going to dispel magic the frame. So your mace touches the frame. The sort of a moment, the sort of blip of magic comes out, and suddenly Corcoran just appears in front of you. He's like, ah! You know, sort of. You know, ah. Ah. We're going to get you out of here. Out of here. But quietly. Quietly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks completely relieved and happy to see you. Okay. I still suspect there's going to be some sort of trap on the door coming out. So I'm going to say we have to be prepared to make a break for it. Break for it, yes. Do you remember which way you came in? Mm, pass those cloves. Ah! Roast. Roast and coming. Ah! So the kitchen. Kitchen. And the cellar. Cellar. And then he goes, oh, um, and he sort of goes, Yes, yeah, the the things. They're not good. We've got a choice. We go out the front door or we go out the cellar. Cellar. Mm, I suspect. I can't. You know me. I, I know I you. Can't, I can't stealth. Stealth. He sort of points to himself like, yeah. can roll really well. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. Um, and then and then Corkin goes, Rah! and then does like, uh, Sex does sobbing noises and then points. Do you reckon you can unlock her door? Right. Unlock her door. Do you reckon you can trap this doorway for traps? Check for traps. Okay. Yeah, I put the shield out so <laughs> to sort of try and like defend for him. Ooh. Sorry, I'm making the no, NPC to do the trap it's, check because I it can't. It sounded like it was meant to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Excellent, you did it. Okay. Oof, natural twenty. <laughs> he goes ah, traps. Can you disarm it? Can't disarm it. Okay. Could I disarm it? Can't disarm it. Mm, that's not good. And he sort of goes, uh, he sort of repeats back. It sounds like almost like the wizard wording's voice. It's like, Rah! artifacts. Rah! There's something in this room that could help us get it out. Corcoran shakes his head. No. The clock set, the, the deck is missing. It goes, Rah! and it sort of points at you. Yep, take it out. And he sort of goes, your know, eyes goes big and he goes, Rah! and he sort of points to the door, points back to it. Oh, so if we leave this, we can get out. Rah! Is there anything else in this room worth taking? Uh, he sort of points around and again points to like the scroll and the healing potion. But again, he says he points at him and goes Rah! and then points back at the door. Right, fine. So can't escape. Door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the cabinet, mm -hmm. put it back in. Yep. Close the door. Yep. Mending can trip. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the glass. Lock. The glass goes back in. <laughs> yeah. Mending. 
<laughs> Shall we? Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> right, and uh, we lead uh, aside to Tim and say it's, it's worth finding the crying lady. Yes? Or should we escape? He cries, like sort of there's the sobbing noise, and then is like, pulls a sad face. Well, you're going to have to unlock the door, my friend. I'll unlock the door, my can... friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll go out and do it. Cool. Uh, so makes his way quietly across. Um, do you stealth at all? Or? Um, I'm going to try. Excellent. I'm going to try. Oh, but actually, I can kind of wait in the door for him to do it, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, that's but... good. She... Oh, right, keep going. Uh, all right. Uh, ooh, three. Ooh, stealth. So that was a 13. I guess you clank a little bit. He's like, shh, shh, shh. Stop. Goes, gets his tools out, and starts picking the lock. 14. Yeah, beats it easily. Sort of like, <laughs> and he sort of, and he sort of opens the door and goes, ah! And sobs, <laughs> and, then, and then out of the door comes this female human, barely in her teens. Again, looks out and she sort of cries and she goes, "Dicky!" And then she's just sort of taken aback by, her, "Oh goodness!" Uh, and then sees you and is quiet. Do you need to escape? Did Did Dicky send you? Yes. Made a section check. <laughs> Not good, Fiona. <laughs> Not good. Uh, three. Three. Oh, Jesus Christ. Who are you? How did you get into my father's laboratory? How did you open this door? Um, my my friend here. I'm come to rescue him. Friend here? Seems like, uh, well, not much of him would have been left had I not come. She's very aware of this yeah. herself. <laughs> um, actually, make a perception check for me. Yeah, she's going to be the same thing. I know it already. Um, it is. Perception is 14. Looking at her, you realise the hair on her head doesn't sit right at all. And you sort of clock that she's wearing a wig. But she looks quite frightened still. Are you leaving? Can you, can you get out? How, how, are you getting, how are you getting out of here? Do you need to get out? Yes, yes. My, my, my boyfriend, Dickie, he, he came to see me and then my father said we couldn't leave. And, so we, and she sort of points inside her room. The bars in her room have been bent forward as if someone had tried to prise them out. He tried to escape and help me out, but the, the guards caught him, and I, I don't know where he is. Is it worth going down to the cellar and getting out, or should we try and break these bars? Oh, they are incredibly strong. Like He needed uh, various equipment from the mines to, to bring them. He made too much noise. Cellar it is, I think. Mm. Make a quick intelligence check for me as well. Uh, 17. 17. There's a human male in the other room bleeding out. Mm-hmm. But clearly quite dead. Yeah, I close that door. Yeah, <laughs> she can't. She wouldn't see him. Yeah, I close going. that door. I, that's that's a that's a sad realization. But uh... Uh, yeah, yes, I, we can go by the servants um, as long as we're quiet. They shouldn't shouldn't know about uh, anything. Is there anything you can do to help, like quiet me down? And then just look down and chew the the, the armor. Oh, and ooh, not yeah. not particularly stealthy. Hoping that she's got like part of that chase or something. <laughs> she's really she's like, not a ranger no, or a rogue. No, um, no. She goes, I, I, I don't think I can make you stealthy, but if, if we're stopped, I can, I can try and stop them. Well, that'll, that'll have to do. We either go up. We'll do. Yeah. 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 Corcoran's just chiming in every so often, like watching you as almost if, like a tele- tennis match going back and forth. Corcoran. Corcoran. After you. After me. After you, oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna, uh... <laughs> we'll, we'll go downstairs then. To um, so yeah, you make your way slowly. Just um, make a stealth check, I guess. Well, it was nice, nice on this adventure. Oh, six! I'm getting better every time. <laughs> Corcoran is almost floats down, like sort of flaps his wings. Yeah, yeah. Um, the girl, as she stumbles a little bit, she looks like she's not eaten for a few hours and stuff like that. Uh, looks very tired, so she also does not do so well. As you sort of get down to the first floor. You see a light as someone's coming up and the person looks up and it is Mez. Oh, Celeste! Oh, you seem to have... And then she sort of went, what's that Kenku doing here? What is going on? And then sort of comes up. Yeah, yeah. Well, you it's shouldn't be out of your room. Making our way down. The wizard sent us. Quick, you need to come quick. Make a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> deception check is 13. Go on, compete against that. <laughs> the wizard sent... Why... Did you go up to the second floor? It's strictly forbidden that the guests come he up to the second the floor. No, he he called me up and we're moving them. Quick, back down. You have got to come with. And I'm like literally pushing everyone down the stairs and moving down. Make another deception check. She's. It's <laughs> <laughs> another thirteen. Oh, uh, okay. I, I I guess and sort of follows you along. W- where are you going? What's what's happening? Down to the cellar. We need to take him to the cobble quickly. Who the the Kenku? Yes. 
Yes. Down to, um, hang on, sorry, I've got the, the name. I've got the name of that. No, it's um, down to Quin Quin. We need to swap him now. He's a, the, the Kenku's not what he wants. There's a cobalt. D- Did he not tell you? N- no, I, I've just been at the mines all day. Make oh, an insight check. Make real. an insight check. Uh, 25. Quin Quin said she was the one that brought him to this place. So she yeah, knows yeah. 100% about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm playing off that wall. Okay. Just come on, you should know. Let's, let's of course, go. of course. Celeste is like, it's clearly very wary at this point. And, the, and then Corcoran's like, come, Cellar, Cellar, like repeating over and over again. You make your way down. So you make your way what down the, to the foyer? Uh, to the, we're going down the sort of the service stairs. The service stairs. stairs. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so go sort of ground floor, basement in one second. Perfect. So. Make a new stealth check, please. A new stealth check. Lovely. Oh my goodness, I got 15. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. With uh, Mez and Toe, it, it seems like both Corcoran and Celeste are like, almost like shadows. They're just darting it straight towards the thing. You yourself are getting there. Mez is sort of, or, or tries to be more cautious, but uh, you know, ends up sort of like, say, but, 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 what, what do you mean he needs the, the cobalt? I don't understand. You know, he's talk, trying to talk to you as you're making your way down the stairs. I'll show you. Come on. Show me. Okay. And you make your way down to Celeste. Uh, you go past the kitchen door uh doesn't seem to be anyone in there there's no sound of uh, cooking anymore or anything like that yeah and the smell of the roast meats and stuff that's still yeah. wafting for him uh, straight down to the cellar straight down to the cellar okay as we go into the room is um quen quen still in there uh yes he's still at the back and as, as he hears people coming he's in, ah, who's that right meza it's really important we do this quickly can you get him out quickly the wizard was really really insistent on this oh another deception check 17 17 she only got a two <laughs> Well, if the wizard really needs him, like, and she goes to, like, she gets out some keys from her belt and starts to unlock the door. Okay, at this point, so, uh, has Quinn Quinn still got the dagger I gave him? Uh, you assume so. Yeah. At this point, mm-hmm. uh, what does, um, what's Meza, because we're, we're down in the basement now, yep. we're, we're like 60 feet in, mm-hmm. underground, mm-hmm. it's pretty enclosed, pretty safe mm-hmm. in terms of, like, sound. We'd have to travel some. To get you would assume, as yeah. we would assume, yeah. yeah. Right, I'm going to with Meza. Yeah. What is she wearing? What What has she got on her? Uh, she's currently wearing silk robes because she was on her way to bed. Yeah. She doesn't have any sort of armor or anything like that on her. Uh, can I see like an arcane focus of any kind on her? Of course, like, you make a perception check. It's the sort of thing. Uh, oh, uh, ten. Ten. It can't tell. No, that's fine. <laughs> oh dear, it's one of those decisions where like. A cleric has to be like, hmm, what am I going to do yeah. in this situation? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm going to look at Fargrim. You're Fargrim. No, sorry. I'm looking <laughs> Corcoran. at Corcoran. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to and enter Quin Quin. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say, if she leaves her alive, we're all dead and cast Bane on her. Oh, that <laughs> sounds like initiative. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Fucking hell. All right, fine. Right. Fine. Uh, I think at this point, she's, there's no way we're getting past her without like something bad happening. All right. And I'm hoping our, our two daggered friends and the lady are going to be able to like help us to an extent. Mm, we will see. We shall see. Oh. God, what am I doing? Yeah. It's all going so well up to this point. Okay. What's your initiative? Oh, my initiative is two. Oh my god, okay. Unfortunately, Mez is the first to react. Um, oh no, actually, you said you cast Bane on her first. I cast so, Bane. So what does she that do? needs to make a charisma saving throw. Does she? That's a 12. Straight that 12. No fails. Excellent. So. Yeah, I'd sort of pull that sort of holy power and again the weapon heats up and there's just sort of like a swirling energy around her that mm-hmm. just seems to like suppress her slightly, Ooh. just in her mannerisms, her reactions, everything is just sort of muted slightly. Nice. Uh but, 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 but whenever she makes an attack roll mm-hmm. or a saving throw before the spell ends, mm-hmm. she must roll a D four and subtract that number from it. Ooh. So she wheels around and goes, I knew it! Her hands shape into sort of like uh, arcane, sort of sort of weaves into the air, and fire uh, appears from her as she shoots a firebolt at you. Ooh, so firebolt. she is going to oh, make a ranged spell attack against you, which is the thing I kept this. The shield comes up. Yeah, it's as a twenty to hit. Uh, and the bane, don't forget. Oh, you're right. Oh, that's my armor class is nineteen. Oh so no. Let's see. 
four. So, so yeah, misses. misses. Like, There's that, yeah, it looks like it's coming to hit me and just hits the shield and erupts around the shield and I'm slowly walking towards. Damn she's it! Like, she's, stop me. she's like, ah! And she just backs up. <laughs> uh, it is now uh, Corcoran's go. Corcoran is going to... Oh, I hope stealth attack. <laughs> I don't know. Go on, Corcoran. Go on, Corcoran. Go on, you can do uh, it. He's going to do a multi-attack with a, a dagger. So the first one is a... Yeah, first one hits, because she's wearing sort pyjamas. Yep, hits again. Yep, so two hits. And uh, third one hits as well. So yeah, wow. she, he, he just goes in all in and then in, not alive, not alive! Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> this is where I don't play rogues. I know, do you want me to roll some dice for Yeah, can you roll 4d6 damage, please? 4d6 for uh, 10, 14. 10, 14. Yeah, she was not prepared for this at all. She just, uh, it, it just lights into her and she, her scream is horrific. And again, with the bayonet sort of, and he, the last sort of final blow, she, he just cuts her across the throat. Yeah, I was going to say, if, if, when she's dying, she's making noise, even I will, like, mace right. to try and, like, black. Yeah, absolutely. And she collapses dead. Right. The key's still in the um, lock. Yeah, the I'm going to take the keys. Um, can I search her for, like, anything else, anything important? Of course, make an investigation check. Celeste is at the back going, oh my god, you killed her! Yeah, I'm just like, she's like, it's the only way, we Corcoran, need to get Cor out of here. Corcoran's like, killed her! Killed her! Yeah, uh, 15. <laughs> 15. Uh, she doesn't seem to be carrying anything. She has, like, sort of a, a necklace on which uh, has some sort of weird eye symbol uh, around her neck, other than the keys, nothing else. Yeah. Oh, with the fact that I've already been burnt by an eye this evening, I'm going to remove the necklace, yep. put it on the floor, yep. and then with, like, um, with the mace, mm -hmm. just wham, smash it. Excellent. Yeah, you no problem bam. at all. It's right. Just it's certain. horrible, yeah. Right, I'm going to look up to them and say, our way out of here now is across the courtyard and up the wall. There are guards, and there are creatures, the snake creatures. Meow. Yes, yeah, exactly. Corcoran, you and me will go last. Can you, and then I'm going to turn to her, can you climb the wall? I, I can try, yes. Um, but we have to be careful that the, the vines on it, they, they've been magically enchanted to, to be poisonous. Is there any way that that can be suppressed? Do they have a weakness at all? I mean, I guess, um, if you have a think about it, uh, well, I mean, fire is always pretty good to get rid of plant life but that would probably get rid of the vines yeah we just have to be really nimble unfortunately it's going to draw a lot of attention to us yeah um, Cor Corcoran's like yeah attention yeah fine, fine. don't you know fine. it Corcoran don't you know it I, I've got a limited ability to hit some fire but not much and again the Corcoran's like meow mm. and then holds up uh, three fingers three of them mm. oh I only saw two ah, that's a shame and then, then he goes <laughs> And I pull out. <gasps> Corcoran's like, ah! I knew copying you would work. Ah! Yeah, we go. Oh, that reminds me. I pull out the sunflower seeds <gasps> and chuck them to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like the bed, just like, yeah. oh, he looks super happy. Yeah. yeah. Up the wall, over, and then just down. We're getting as much distance as we can between us and this place. Okay. If, are, are you capable of fighting at all? Um, not really. Not, not, I, I'm not. Uh, versed in any martial arts, but um, and she pulls off the wig, and you can see all over her skull are these horrible runes and like various scars and stuff. But it looks like almost well, arcana in nature. And she's like, "Well, I can do some some psychic um, damage if need be." The plan for all of us is that we keep running. We get as much distance as we can. I'm not going to be able to run as fast as you. So when I turn around mm -hmm. and act as a defense. Mm -hmm. I need you both to turn around and help me deal with whatever's caught up to us at that point, and then we move on. So we move run. On. If we get caught, we stop, kill, and then run again. Stop, kill, run again. I think this will be fine. We'll be fine. You both stealth up to the wall, get up as far as you can. Once you're at the top, I'm just going to sprint. There's no point in me stealthing. Mm -hmm. Corcoran, you know this. So they will Corcoran attack us, but if they're attacking me, and I sort of point to my chain... They're going to have to get through my iron work, and that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Yeah. So, ready? Ready. Okay, is the trap door locked? Uh, going up to it, uh, it, you maybe jangle it a little bit, it appears so. Yeah, can I lock it with the keys I've got? Uh, you can, yes. Oh, before we've done this, by the way, yep. I've... Um, oh, the cobalt, I'm assuming, is still with us. <laughs> like, what, yeah, about yeah. Me? what about me? Quick yeah, yeah, no, Remember quick your friend. You're coming with us, too. <sighs> Excellent. Yeah. 
So we pull her like body into one of the cages, close yep. the cage, just like hide it like yeah, that. Yeah, the blood is starting to pool out now and go yeah. into sort of the, the, the soil and stuff. Yeah, I'll unlock it. Excellent. Are you waiting to hear anything? Are you just going to... Yeah, well, um, I me and Corcoran will we'll make perception checks, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to rely Excellent. on him a little bit now. Well, can, can, you, can you assist me? Of course, Put it yes, that way. yes. We'll use, that. My, use my we'll, He can assist you, yes. All right, fine. Uh, 21. Corcoran sort of like quietly to you goes in. And then he gives you like the okay sign of a huge yeah. bird. So we're like stealthily open the things and send the three of them out first. Okay. Uh, the wall is about 10 feet away. Oh, that's closer than I thought. Fantastic. Um, so I guess Celeste goes out first. So, what, so you were going to say what order? get three of them to move up almost at the same time and I was going to bolt for it at the once end. they were safe. Okay. Celeste. No problem. She makes it. She almost, again, because of her slight figure, she manages to get up the wall, climbs over sort of hoists that looks back to you and again her sort of whole frame is uh, illuminated slightly by the glowing f- things but she's made it across no problem there at all yeah Corcoran Corcoran he, he gets there and he's sort of like the, he's because he's just scrambling now he's not a very um coordinated bird at the best of times <laughs> and as he uh gets up there he t- he, you see him catch his uh wings on the uh on the vines and he sort of <clears throat> makes a call out but oh, that's a good point there doesn't seem to be any reaction, and he just makes himself over. Yeah. And the, and then finally, Quinn Quinn. Yeah. I'm only for all these. Oh, your favourite yeah. NPCs today. I'm rescuing. I'm a cleric. It's what I do. Um, he he sees a uh, Corcoran go up. And goes ah, Quinn Quinn can do better than that. Does the exact same thing. Catches himself. And goes ah, and so yeah. calls out. Takes a bit more damage uh, from that. Corcoran sort of peeks over the top, and is like, um, it's like Falcon, Falcon. So I'm gonna move my way up. I'm gonna try and stealth. Yeah, just try and stealth. Keep it alive. Oh, that's a five. You hear from the side of the house with a... <laughs> and then sort of like something starting to pad towards you. Yeah, I'm up as quick as I can at this right. point. No no stealth at all. Excellent. Can you make me a dex saving throw for me, please? Dex saving throw. Here yes. we go. Yes. Uh, that is a one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did <Well>, I pass? <laughs> You take. I'm just grunting through it at this point. You, you. I don't think you get up at all because you again because it's a natural one. You sort of slide back down. Half oh no, I got three minus two. Oh, okay. But you said it's a natural one. <laughs> no, okay, no, you think that, but no. Fair I've enough. Got okay, minus two on that's my fine. You take four poison damage oh, yeah. as this horrible the vines sort of cut into you. Just you know under bits of that your armor didn't cover at all. It is a horrible feeling of yeah. really nasty. You, you managed, to, and, you managed uh, to pull it up, and just as you get to the top. Around the corner comes one of these hideous leopard creatures with the snakes, and it yeah. sees you, and it starts to... At this to... point, I get the meat out and chuck it out. Excellent. Uh, do me a... Oh, would it be... Um, I guess it would be an athletics check. Athletics check. You're trying, you're trying to check. throw it to the, to the animal. 14. 14. Sails over its head, and the snakes... It's almost like that... Oh, what scene is it? Is it... Oh... There's some scene with like Medusa's <laughs> head and they all go <laughs> like that. Yeah. And, it, and it goes and rushes after it. You manage to throw it a good long distance away. And actually round the other corner comes the other one who sensed and smelt there was yeah. some sort of different things around the, the courtyard. And it starts they start ripping into this meat and just snapping at each yeah. other. Because I had three stakes, so I can chuck the others. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I assume you do by the way. Are the other three made their way down the wall? Or? Yes, they, they made your way down so that you could get over as well. Yeah. So you <sighs> down they go. And as you hit the ground suddenly the lights on the house start to come on and there's shouts and screams and stuff and then you can hear commotions as people start to... Go, 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 go. Are you just all going? Are you just... Yeah, at this point it's like sort of sprint, disappear. Uh, What's the sort of scenery around the the manor like? Can Because I know there's one path down to the village. Mm -hmm. If we just go down the south wall of so the back wall. Back wall, yep. We're going, I assume, into the middle of nowhere? It's like part of the mountainside. Like there's no... like. So you could go up up the mountain a bit further. There's a couple of trees and stuff you can hide around. Yeah. Um, well, at this yeah. point, we want to put distance between us. So we're not going to stop the stealth. We're going to just yep. sprint. Perfect. Until we can get almost out of sight, and then perhaps we'll try and hide. I mean, if you we think we're being followed. I mean, you know that there's the wagons and stuff in the weirding that you could try and uh, get on and just escape quicker if you get down to weirding in time. But equally, you can just hide in the forests and the bushes nearby and see if... We'll make our way back round to weirding through the like through the wilderness cool. route. If that makes uh, sense. Make an athletics check for me. 
Uh, natural 20. God, nice. I'm getting good tonight. With that, because again, one person did not pass, but it's fine because it's a group check. Um, you rush down. I think Quinn Quinn is like, eh, it sort of falls yeah. down. And it's sort at of one bleeding point, bridges. because he's so small, maybe he just like pick him up, stick him on me, because I'm the slowest of the group. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 16 strength. Like, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you make your way down. And as you sort of maybe glance back a few times, you see like the guards start to come out and actually, actually make a perception check with disadvantage, though, because you are trying to run away. Yeah, that's Nah, that is Ooh, 14, 14 with disadvantage. You notice it now. Their eyes seem to almost glow in the dark, this horrible, sickly light, as if something is controlling them. And out of the sort of main gate, you see the form of what you assume is the, the wizard weirding. And it sort of looks out, and it doesn't move. It just stays there, but it's clearly trying to find out where Celeste's gone. But you make it, you rush down, down the... As we're coming into the village, the thing I'm looking for is, I know the guards, they look like they've got their eyes lit up. Do Mm -hmm. the townspeople also have that same look as we get closer? Because if if they do, we'll start to, like, That is a good point. That is a good point. Let me check (laughs) what's in the monster manual. (laughs) Yeah, I just want to double check. I don't know what the, the range of this is, actually. That would be that would be a no go if if the, the whole village is now under some sort of you like parole like it doesn't say that's interesting I am going to be nice because it is quite it's about a twenty minute walk yeah. so by the time you get to the village no one seems to be awake or stuff but the the sounds of the guards are coming down you'd assume it, it might spread but I might have time you might have time right fine well we'll go to wherever we can get horses or mm-hmm. like a wagon of some kind yeah they are hitched up out uh, in some sort of stables just close to the entrance and again there's because it's a outpost there's no gate or anything at night yeah perfect um mm-hmm. is there any guarding it anyone uh, it doesn't seem to be at this current moment no okay i get because i'm <laughs> good character yeah and it's awful i get the rest of the gold i've got about 42 gold excellent so i get it in the pouch Yep. Um, just with the other dagger I've got, just nail it to the side of the oh, woods by nice. where the horses are. Yep. And then we unhitch the horses and we take them. Excellent. Are they, is anyone sharing horses or is everyone getting horses? Corcoran will come with me. Yep. Um, Queen Crown can go with um, Celeste. Celeste. Ooh. Can you make me an animal handling check? Yes, I can. Hooray! <laughs> yes, I can. I was gonna 19. Just... Nice. I mean, Anything just... wisdom based is fantastic for me. Uh, again, everyone passes. So you somehow, Quinn Quinn, who does not seem like the most stable horse uh, rider of the lot, suddenly takes control and he, he's like clearly the adventurer and he's like, Quinn Quinn will save the day. Yeah. And Celeste sort of Get like. Quinn Quinn. <laughs> Celeste sort of grabs him and sort of holds her, obviously, wig. Uh, torn asunder and thrown away you and Corcoran on the same horse and you gallop out of weirding uh, where do you go do you go back to two days away or do you um... well uh, I think it's about two days away isn't it, it? Uh, so it's two days away we'll, we'll <laughs> head that way yeah 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 make one last check make a survival check for me a survival and do check. it with advantage because Corcoran will help you because he has been on this path before uh, oh that is annoying um it takes you much longer. I think you're trying to weave in and out and trying to avoid anyone on the road. You don't want any sightings of you being reported. That's fair. So I guess it, about a week later, you return back to two days later. You hear all this sort of rumour and stuff about how weirding the outpost has just been torn apart. They were looking for a woman and they found bodies in the manor and the wizard had just disappeared completely. And half the guards had been had been taken and the something about weird leopard like creatures with with uh, snakes oh sounds terrible we should never go to weirding what a name no that no. is a weird place that's it and that's it <laughs> yeah. hey i actually survived. You survived but for how long oh, i know i'm having a like, very powerful mind flare after me because yes. i totally know what he is i know um, i was just like ah uh. i know i was like i'm not oh gonna God. fight that i'm level five yeah I, I was looking at the stats for it and i was like holy shit that is terrible yeah. on your own finding a lost companion is difficult at the best of times Finding a lost Kenku in a strange village where the residents are under the control of a mind flayer who is disguised as a wizard conducting horrific medical experiments. Well, let's just say it's not for the faint-hearted or the inexperienced. Roll credits. The What Am I Rolling podcast was created, recorded and edited by me, Fiona Howard. This episode's player was Ryan Harris. 
This episode's RPG one-shot was The Lost Kenku, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons adventure by Sean Wood, produced in conjunction with Extra Life. You can find out more about the world of Dungeons & Dragons on the official Dungeons & Dragons website. That's dnd.wizards.com. You can find out more information about Extra Life and the work they do on their website. That's www.extra-life.org. The theme music was 8-Bit March by Twin Musicon or twinmusicon.org, licensed under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. If you want to find out more about the podcast, check out the website. That's www.wairpodcast.com. Fancy getting in touch? Email the podcast at whatamirollingpodcast at gmail.com. Finally, follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at wair underscore podcast for latest news on upcoming episodes. And remember, adventurers need not apply.